Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk a take a look at using pointer events in Pixie.js. All right. So if you followed my previous tutorials, I have here a base stub uh, application here. So uh, I'm going to go and basically use this and carry on uh, to create the application in today's example. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, look at early look uh, back at some of my other base tutorials, and you'll see what it is. Basically, we're just creating a, a, a simple app window on load function that creates this app and then puts it into a div over here on the body. All right, so what are the pointer events? The pointer events basically will, will encompass mouse and touch uh, events. And there's a couple of them that you uh, have, to under, have to deal with. Basically, you have your standard point of mouse up or pointer up, uh, pointer down, pointer over, but then there's also a pointer out and a pointer uh, out ups, uh, pointer up outside. And we'll talk about using those. So first things first is, you know, I, I'm gonna run my, my live server here and get a browser up so we can see there's nothing going on right now and so we'll, what we'll do is we'll simply create a uh, rectangle and we'll use uh, graphics to show that the pointer events also work for, uh, for for standard pixie graphics not only sprites all right so we'll do that first and then we'll uh, then add some interactivity to it all right so we'll first, first start off we'll say let rect equals new pixie oops i typed that right New pixie.graphics. All right, and then now we'll set up. A, um, actually, to make things a little easier, I'm going to add a couple of things up here to, uh, to aid us, right? So, um, some constants. We'll use some constants here. Uh, let's use a normal, and what we'll be using uh, for this example, we're using tint colors. Because uh, you can't change fill colors in a graphic in Pixie, but you can change the tint. So normal here, and uh, they're also hexadecimal values. So this right here obviously is going to be a white, and uh, a tint of white actually turns tinting off. So that's going to be our normal situation where the graphic will be well untinted. And then we'll make another constant here, and we'll call it over. So when you're mouse over it, what's going to look like? Uh, let's just go with uh, um, green. So R G B. So all right, there's that. And then we got a constant over here, and we'll go down. So when you when you actually mouse down or touch down on our graphic, it will. Let's just go with. Um, uh, let's just go use red. How's that sound? So there we go. Okay, we'll use that. So we'll use these constants to indicate the color that will tint our graphic uh, when the pointer events happen. All right. So now we'll go back down here, and we'll create our rectangle here. So we'll say rect dot Let's see, begin, fill, and we'll use the normal color. All right, so we'll first create it up here. And we'll say rect dot draw rect. All right, so I'm going to use uh, absolute centering of my, uh, I'll put, the, put this in the center. So we'll do an app dot view dot width divided by two, right? And we'll and, uh, we'll make it 200 wide. So in order to get it centered, remember when you create, uh, when you create the, uh, Rects, they're going to create from the upper left, so we're going to have to subtract it by 100 so we can get the middle point. Uh, view dot height, all right, divided by 2, minus 100. So that's the, that's the starting x and y location, and then we'll make it 200 by 200. So it'll be a 200 pixel, 200 wide high rectangle. Okay, and uh, we'll just end fill that. All right. All right. Just we'll start for this right now, and we'll see what we get. So I'm gonna one thing we'll do. We'll do an app dot stage dot add child, and we'll add the rect to the stage. All right. So if I save this, let me go back to the browser here. There it is. So ta da! It's rect. It's white. It's kind of boring. Not a lot going on. So let's. Uh, how do we make it into a button? Well, there's two modes you have to turn on here. So after the fill. We're going to do a rect.interactive equals true. And then the next thing we're going to do is go rect.button mode equals true. All right, I'm going to hit, hit uh, control shift F here to help format everything for me. And I'll save that. And now just from that, you'll see that, um, oh, let's see, should have, oh, that helped I spell button correctly. Um, so save that, and now you see that just simply by rolling over 
on top of this with my mouse, I get a little pointer, but nothing happens. So next, we have to determine what uh, events we, we work on. So now we define the functions. So we'll say rect dot on, and so we have, so pointer up is one of them. And now we get to define our own function. Now we haven't made these functions yet, so I'll make one here called do pointer up. All right, so when the pointer up event is detected, we're going to call the do pointer up function. Next one is on, let's see, pointer, pointer down. All right, do pointer down. All right, next one we do is rect dot on pointer over. All right, so this is going to be when you roll, like roll the mouse over on top of it. We'll do pointer over. Okay, and then rect dot on pointer out. Do pointer out. Okay, so we'll, we will just do these first. All right. So now down here, I'm gonna, let's see, I don't necessarily need this, but we'll just leave it there as a blank for now. And we'll just do function do pointer up. I'll make my stubs first. And function, ooh, I can't spell, do pointer uh, down. I'm gonna just copy these and paste them. It's for, a little faster. Boom, boom. Okay, so down. Uh, see over, and then uh, out. All right. So, so these are our events, right? So pointer up when you we actually click and let lift up the pointer, uh, and when you hit when you push down on it, when we were over, roll over it, and then we were, when we come out of it. Okay. So those are our events, and that's what they correspond to. So these are the events. And that's what they do. All right. Uh, for now, let's just uh, just do something like console dot log. I'll just type up and do something similar with these ones here. Console dot log. And this is out. Oh, that's down. And then same here. Log. And this was uh, over. And last one down here, log, and out. Okay, so we'll save that. I'll go back to the browser and we'll bring up the console, initial shift I, of the console, and we'll dock it over to the side here. Actually, we're gonna undock this here. I'm gonna, oops, it's uh, down below, it's over here. Okay, so then we'll go to the console here, so we'll see. So once I hit Control R to reload, so once I come here, uh, you see that I'm over it now, and I'm out, over, out. And if I click down, down, and my mouse button's down, and then up, as I let, let go of the mouse button, it's up. So we know that the events are being triggered. So something's happening, which is great. So now let's apply those tinting colors that I have. So let's go with the down first. That's the easy one, right? So down is here so i can basically then just uh, let's, let's comment this out for now and then we'll just do a uh, this dot tint equals down so just uh, save that reload and see what happens so over here console up so you see there it is all right so when i click down it turned red all right so it's great now nothing else happens because we have didn't wire up the rest of the events so let's go here. So on up, let's just keep it simple for now. I'm gonna basically comment this out as well, as well as this. And in case you're curious, I'm doing, I'm doing control forward slash, and that comments my line. So for this one, I'll do this dot tint. So when I'm mouse up, I want it back to turn it back to normal. Okay. And when I'm over it, I want this dot tint. Tint, you yeah, can't type, okay, sorry. Uh, to over and then when I'm out and you roll out of it I want the tint to become normal right so this dot tint 
equals normal. So when you roll out of it, it was that. Let's take a look how that works. All right, so I roll in, it's green. All right, when I roll out, it's white. All right, now I click down, it's red. I let go, it turns white. But that's kind of, this is where we get some interesting little interaction problems. So you notice that this is fine, all right? But then I let go, it becomes white. But I'm still over it. So that's the problem, isn't it? So I'm still over it. So it should be green because I'm over here when I roll out and go in. My over state should be green, all right? Now my down state is red. But when I let go, hmm, it should be green because I'm still over it. All right, so that's an interesting little state problem. So we'll have to account for that. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to have to basically uh, rec basically recognize if uh, the pointer is down uh, already. And also we have to think about in the pointer uh, if you're over something, right? So we have to see if the pointer is over. So we'll add some additional booleans over here. So we'll say let pointer is down. I'll say false here. And I'll say let pointer is over. False. So we'll use these to know that, you know, are we still holding the mouse button down or are we actually still over something? So we'll need these. So how do, how do we make use of this? So when we go and take a look uh, at the, um, the uh, down state. Now the down state, let me see. Yeah, actually what we're going to do is on the down state, all right, uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's do with the over first. All right, so let's do that one first. So when we're rolling over something, not only do we want to change the color, but we want to say pointer is over is true. That way we know that you know, so now we're over something. Okay. So then when we're out, all right, we roll out, we want to set to the false. Pointer is uh, over is false. So now that basically when we're rolling over, this is true, and when we're rolling out is false. So that's great. So how do what do we do with that? So what happens is well, what's happen. Let's go back and look at the, uh, what's happening here. So when we roll over, that's fine, right? Okay. But then we click down. All right. But we click when we click up, it, it turns back into normal. But that's not the case. We want it since we're over, it should be green. All right, so how do we do that? So on the upside, we'll have to check. So on the up here, we're going to basically say, if pointer is over, all right, so that uh, if it's true, okay, uh, then we don't want to turn normal. Else, then we turn normal. So if, if we're not over it, then we turn normal. Otherwise, we're going to keep it uh, in its green state, in its over state. All right, so there. So this takes care of the situation. So now, once again, basically saying if the, if, if the pointer is over is true, which means that our mouse is still over our rectangle, then uh, on the mouse up event, we're going to turn it back to our green color versus turning it back into normal. Okay. So let me save that and go back here. So now we click red. My mouse is down as red. When I let go, it's green because I am still over. All right. Because over is true. And has not and is, hasn't been turned false until I get out. However, this is an interesting problem here now. Look at this. So my mouse is still down, okay, but I've rolled out. All right. So this is an interesting case where uh, where my mouse is down and I've rolled outside of it, but but the out is called uh, right here because well I left the object. So now this is where that boolean for the is pointer down comes in because in this situation we want while I'm, my mouse is still down if I'm going out I don't want to disable that all right so now we have, that's another check we have to do okay so how do we put this one here now then so this is where the uh, on out comes in right so this is where I want to where you know right here I basically turn it back to normal if I go out well now we have to have a, a condition here so we can say if um, if if the pointer is if not pointer is down, so basically the pointer is down is false. All right, so because my mouse is not down, then we do this. Otherwise, we're not going to do this. All right, so so now basically saying that if the pointer is down is true, we skip it. All right, so if my mouse button is down, we're not going to do this. So now if we look at this now, we go here. I notice, oops, hmm, it's still not doing it. How come? Oh, yeah, I forgot. We didn't set it. So 
we have to do this. So if uh, pointer is down, we have to set that boolean. So we'll say pointer is down equals true. All right. So we want to do that. Um, but now we also have to say that when you mouse up, we have to reset that too. All right. Um, so we have to say all right, irregardless if it's up. All right, we're going to say pointer is down is false. So anytime the mouse is up, we obviously the pointer is no longer down. All right, but when we're hitting down, the mouse or touching, the pointer is down is true. Okay, and then we're basically saying that what if it's not true? Basically, if the mouse is not down, then we do the out operation like normal. Okay, now here we go. Let's take a look. See here. So now here, pull it down, and it's great. So what happened there though? Hmm. I entered again. Ah, look at that. The re-entering triggered the over. So we'll have to do the same thing over here. I'm going to say that if let's see if the point if the pointer is not down, we'll do the over operation. Otherwise, you skip it. All right. So we avoid that situation. Oh, did I do it? There we go. Yep. So my pointer is down and it's not triggering it. But now the problem here is though, though is now I let go out here. All right. That's an interesting problem now. I, I have to, oh, well, I let go of the mouse outside of this. And so you see how uh, this is fine, right? The mouse up, the pointer up is detected, but not here because I'm not over it anymore. So what do we do about that? All right, we have another one we didn't talk about here. So we have another event, rect dot on pointer up outside. All right, so that's a fun one. So basically, this event is for when you have the pointer, you let go of it outside of our object. So now we do pointer up outside function. Ta -da. So look at all these events. So that's the other one right here. So this one is going to be used for when we let, we let go of the mouse button if we're outside of our current object. So on the function. So function do pointer let's see up outside. Okay, so what does this thing do now? So what is going to happen? Well, we, we uh, are going to be up outside. So we're going to have to basically uh, set the tint back to normal. Right, but not only that, though, now we're also not over our object. So pointer is over is false. And also, no, we let go, right? So pointer is down is false. All right, so there we go. So this is now how to handle when you are let go of the mouse button outside of your current object. So let's take a look at that now. Down, up, there you go, see? And that's how it's supposed to happen, right? Because obviously it's red and I'm not over it so it won't be green, let go, it's white. So that's how, that's how we're going to deal with it. All right, so there you have it, a look at pointer events on a graphic. All right, so the next thing we're going to do uh, in my next video is we're going to talk about, obviously, look, this is, this is one, okay? And you notice that we're using this here. This is going to represent the current object, which is going to be this one here, this rect. But how do you distinguish the uh, the objects if you have more than one? All right, how do you handle that situation? All right, so in my next video, we'll talk about that. But here, uh, hopefully, this will, this is helpful for you. That basically, once again, we're looking at this. Just a quick recap: is we're basically drawing a rectangle. It's important we have to turn the interactivity and the button modes on, and then we define the events that we're wanting to. Uh, interact with being the up down over out and the up outside calling our functions okay and that's what these all do and we actually have these uh, booleans here that we're using to basically determine if you know if our mouse is still down and also if we're still over our object okay. all right so i think this is enough for this topic for now um, i might work on some other ones to clarify or just expand on the topic a bit more but if there's something you want to see uh, something i have not covered just yet you know feel free to leave a comment below or send me a message and, you know, as always, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so.